Hello everyone and welcome back to another furniture flipping video. In today's video we will be working on a French provincial bedroom set made by Thomasville. As you can see the finish is a little worn out and the color is a little dated so we're going to update that and let's go ahead and jump into this one and get our hands dirty. I like to start all my projects out the same way by removing all the drawers and all the handles just to see what I'm working with and make sure everything's structurally sound. Then I like to move in and start cleaning everything with a degreaser and currently I'm using TSP followed up by some water and I'm using a leaf blower to blow all the big chunks of dust and debris out so that way the cleaning process is a lot easier. Cleaning is a very important step because it does save your sanding pads from getting gunked up with all that dirt and debris and it keeps you from digging it into the, the wood and it also shows the customer that you really did take your time by cleaning the inside and the out so that they get a premium product when you go to deliver it. So I have a previous video where I have this exact same dresser set just a little different in the design and I'm going to be doing the same kind of color and wood combination on this one by staining the top or whitewashing it, I haven't decided yet, and painting the rest of the body. Unfortunately, later on in the video you'll see that I have to paint the handles, and that's due to the handles not being real brass. When I tried to polish them out, it kind of took the finish off and they started to turn a silver nickelish color. So you'll see me later on in the video take care of that. Typically I'll use a stripper to strip the top down before I sand it, but sometimes stripping it leaves too long of a process of waiting for it to dry so that way you can come back and sand it. So I just grabbed some 80 grit sandpaper and I started going to town. But one thing you want to make sure is that you stay away from the edges as much as possible because you don't want to blow through that veneer because then it would give it a really ugly look. Once I'm done stripping all of the finish off the top with an 80 grit, I go over it with 150 grit and follow it up with a 220 grit just so I can get all the swirl marks out. Because I use an HVLP spray gun rather than brushing, I have to tape all the drawers off and mask them. And it can be a pain because there's about 13 drawers in this project and it can get very tedious, but it's worth it. So here I'm masking off the top and the reason for that is because I'm going to paint the body first before I stain it and I actually came up with the idea that I'm going to whitewash it kind of like I did my first project um, in this French provincial style and you'll see that later on in the video. I like to overlap the tape over the edge because I come back with a sharp razor blade and I trim off all the excess and it's okay if you trim off a little too much because whatever you get paint on the top when you remove all the tape and masking paper you can just go ahead and sand it back off and you'll have your nice flush clean line and then I can go ahead and proceed with the whitewashing. During this process you want to be very careful not to hold the razor blade in the wrong angle because you can dig out some of the wood as well as the veneer and it will expose the wood underneath the veneer giving it a different color. For the rest of the dresser because I'm painting it I'm going to go over it with 150 grit sandpaper maybe a 220 uh, check for some spots that maybe need some wood filler and prep it and get it ready for paint. Sanding may be the most boring and tedious part of any project, but it is by far the most important. If you don't sand, then the paint's not going to stick very well, and when you go to scuff sand your coat, it's going to come off very easily. So take your time, prep it right, and the project's going to go very smoothly for you. So I couldn't really figure out what color I wanted to go with for this dresser, so I had a couple of colors laying around, which is a gray and a very dark green. I'm going to mix them together so that I can give it a nice, really light green color with a lot of undertones of gray. Um, it's going to be a lighter color and I think it's going to really contrast with what I do to the handles later on. If you let your paint sit for too long, you're going to have to mix it. The chemicals or whatever they use inside the paint tends to separate, so just go ahead and give it a good mix before you start using it. So I don't have an exact ratio of how I'm mixing this, I'm just kind of mixing them until I like the color that it comes out and then I'll just try to mimic that later on so that I can mix a bigger batch. When using latex paint and an HVLP spray gun it's always a good idea to mix a little bit of water in with your paint to thin it out because if you don't then the paint's not going to really come out of the gun right and you're going to have to put on a lot of coats. So 
So the paint does come with a built-in primer, so I decided to just try it without adding a layer of primer underneath because I didn't go down to bare wood. So it should be fine. We're gonna give it a try. We might have to put about three coats with some sanding in between each coat. After the first coat, I like to use 220 grit to give it a nice scuff coat, but after that, I'll use a 400 grit so that way I don't leave a lot of deep scratches because if you put a layer of paint over a deep scratches, you're going to see it. So the scuff sanding in between each coat isn't just for the bonding of the paint, it's also to smooth the paint out because if you ever spray like one or two coats and you run your hand across it, it's going to feel very rough, especially if you have dust or anything flying around in the air that attaches to the paint while it's drying, that sanding takes care of all of that and you get a nice smooth finish once you're done. After this second coat of paint, it's got some very good coverage, so I decided to just move on to the polyurethane top coat, which I use Verithane's water-based polyurethane with a satin finish. And I am mixing the paint with the top coat, and I tend to do that with all of my pieces because it acts as another layer of paint, and it acts as a top coat at the same time. So it just, it really makes for a very durable finish. There's really not much of a difference between the process of painting and the process of applying the top coat. I'm using my spray gun, I'm doing two to three coats, but for the sanding in between each coat I use 400 grit sandpaper and that helps to keep all the scratches away and you get a nice smooth top coat when you're done. So this dresser does come in a set and it has two matching nightstands and I'm not filming any of that footage because it's the same exact process for the big dresser. So if I don't show any of that, it, that's pretty much the reason why. Unfortunately, I couldn't polish these handles out, so what I'm doing is I'm using an oil rubbed bronze color by Rust-Oleum, and it has gold metallic flakes in it, and I'm going to contrast that with this gilding wax in an antique gold color. I'm going to rub it around and just hit the high points so that it gives it that tarnished vintage look. With the gilding wax, you don't need to lay it on really thick because this stuff, once it gets onto whatever you're using it for, it tends to stick very well. So lightly rub it on and add as you go because it's a little hard to remove if you put too much. Now that I'm done with the handles and the body is completely dry, I'm removing the masking paper and tape so that I can reveal the top and I know earlier in the video I said I was probably going to whitewash it, but instead I'm going to use Howard's Feed and Wax because the contrast from the wood to the body was just a little too light between each other. So with the Howard's Feed and Wax it gives it more of a natural yellowish look and that's exactly what I'm going for. I'm really digging how those handles came out. They really do look authentic and vintage, which they are. It's just the, the coat of paint is not, but I think, it, I, think I pulled it off. Um, this is one of my favorite parts is putting all the handles and all the hardware back on because now it's almost time to put all the drawers back in and reveal the final look of this piece. Now that the hardware is all reinstalled and I'm starting to get some of the drawers put back in place, let's go ahead and take a look at how this piece looked when I first started and how it's going to look now that I'm done. And that brown really is an outdated look and I'm glad that I got rid of it. The color, the handles, and the top are perfect on this dresser and I couldn't be happier. So at the end of every video I like to go over the numbers and for this one I paid $80 with the nightstands included. I put maybe $20 in material because I already had the paint and everything in my stock. I completed this dresser in about 7 hours and I sold it for $700, giving me a profit of $600 and if I break that down hourly, that's $85 an hour, which is some awesome profit. Thank you to everyone who stopped by and watched this video, gave me some thumbs up and some very, very encouraging comments. Um, I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you guys on my next project.